Hey there, everybody. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of What's Hot with Sea of Tranquility. I did promise you, uh, hopefully, a couple more reviews today. Some new CDs that are coming out. This latest one is from a long-standing progressive rock band who got their start probably like in the very early 90s. They've been very prolific over the years. This is, it's either their 19th or their 20th studio album. I guess it's if you if you call A Matter of Time from last year, which was kind of some reworked tracks from the past. I guess if you don't count that, this is number 19. If you count that, this is number 20. Uh, it's basically part two of what I believe is going to be a trilogy. This is called Scalagrim Into the Breach. Now, of course, if that's not a prog rock album cover, I don't know what is, right? Of course, these guys are from uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Various lineups over the years. Steve Babb and Fred Schendel always at the helm, the driving forces behind this band. Uh, this follows up A Dreaming City, which was part one of this proposed trilogy. Uh, the storyline behind this is based on a book that Steve Babb has been working on that I believe is going to be released fairly soon. All conceptual, all about fantasy. Man, if you love like fantasy books, fantasy stories, You've come to the right place. Uh, generally speaking, Glass Hammer have long since done lots of concept albums with these grand conceptual ideas that you know involve multiple vocalists and instrumentalists and really in-depth storylines. Uh, if you're into like lyrics and really like getting into uh, kind of these big, fantastical, amazing, grandiose storylines. And with music that completely backs it up, again, you've come to the right place. That's what Glass Hammer is all about. One thing I do want to mention, uh, and I touched on this when I reviewed uh, Dreaming City back last year. I can't think of another band in recent memory that has dramatically changed their sound so much in a short period of time as these guys have. So they, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, the current singer of Yes, John Davison, before he joined Yes was actually the lead singer for a while with Glass Hammer. And the last bunch of albums prior to uh, Dreaming City, we're talking about uh, Chronomena, Valkyrie, Breaking of the World, Ode to Echo, Perilous Corcordium, a bunch of those albums. Uh, and a good chunk of the Glass Hammer catalog. Very symphonic prog rock with lots of nods to like Yes, certainly, ELP, Genesis, that sort of thing. That's, that was kind of their style for many, many years and many, many albums to the point where, I think I even said it on more than a few occasions, uh, they're basically making yes-sounding albums that I wish yes would make, right? But I guess, you know, you get to a point where it's like, well, you want to kind of maybe switch gears a little bit and find some different identities and things like that. And with uh, Dreaming City, their last album, the band really changed their sound quite a bit. It's a much darker album, definitely heavier in spots uh you had brought some new people to the fold and you know it just totally different glass hammer okay this takes that one step further so here let's uh let's take a look at the album here or the cd i should say i call i call music albums okay it's album the medium is cd or lp or cassette or whatever it's an album a recorded piece of work so here you've got the uh booklet all right, with all sorts of illustrations and lyrics to the stories. And again, I'll read it to you here. Uh, this is the follow-up to our album, Dreaming City. This is part two of a series inspired by the Scalagram books that are currently in the works. I hope to have the first Scalagram in the Vales of Pagarna, published soon, Steve Babb, September 2021. Okay, so uh, yes, and this, this did, just did come out. Again, you kind of take a look at that, right? I mean, that's if you're into this sort of thing, this would be right up your alley. There you got, you know, warriors and wizards and demons and all that sort of thing. And there is the band. Okay, so let's tell you who the band is. So we've got uh, Steve Babb. That is, uh, where is Steve? Right, right in the center there. Okay, Steve is on bass guitar, keyboards, guitar, lead and backing vocals. Fred Schendel on keyboards, guitars, lead and backing vocals. Uh, there is Fred right there. Okay. Here he is. Uh, you've got uh, Aaron Ralston on drums. That's Aaron right there. And then you've got uh, Hannah Pryor 
on lead vocals. That is Hannah. Whoops, there we go, right there. Try not to get the glare there. And also appearing on lead guitars, you've got Reese Boyd and Brian Brewer, both just playing lead guitars on this album. So I'm assuming that Fred is doing most of the rhythm guitar work and the fills and things like that, but uh, Reese and Brian are doing all of the lead guitar work. So what does the album sound like? Well, it's funny because basically everything I've described, the prior music of Glass Hammer before, it's really not what you get here. Whereas the older Glass Hammer material is much more keyboard oriented and symphonic. This is darker, heavier, crunchier, very guitar based. Sure, there's plenty of keyboards on here as well, but it's not the focal point of the music. There's lots of vocals. Okay, you got both uh, Fred and um, and Steve singing along with, I'm um, sorry, Hannah. I'll make sure I get used to her. She's fairly new to the band. A um, lot of vocals, very heavy. You've got 13 tracks here. Most of them are fairly lengthy, you know, in the anywhere from six, you got six, seven, four, six, seven, seven, eight, nine, you know, so it's kind of all over the place. Most of the songs are fairly lengthy by normal song structures. Very riff driven. A lot of great dark and crunchy riffs on this. Uh, I made a comment on their last album that I thought there was a decidedly strong Rush element going throughout that last album. And I'm talking Rush circa like Permanent Waves, Hemispheres, Farewell to Kings era, that sort of thing. Even more so here, I think. Uh, specifically tracks like uh, Hyperborea, second to last track, which I think is the longest on the album at just under 10 minutes long. I mean, it sounds like it could have been a leftover song from uh, Hemispheres. Really cool musically. Nice keyboards, lots of big, meaty, heavy riffing. Uh, you've got a really interesting song, The Ogre of Archon, which, man, you listen to that carefully. I'm hearing some stuff straight off of Black Sabbath's first album mixed with a little, like, kind of Carry On Wayward Son era Kansas, you know, from uh, Left Overture. Kind of interesting, right? This, like, really early Sabbathy, doomy thing meets, like, late 70s American progressive rock. Interesting, right? Really cool. Uh, some other songs. Into the Breach, really good. That's kind of really proggy, but also kind of heavy. Uh, you've got uh, Anthem to Andorra, really fun track. You got some cool, like kind of like space rocky things on here, which also found their way onto the last album, like Hawkwind, Tangerine Dream, that sort of thing, like uh, A Spell Upon His Mind and Moonpool. Really interesting stuff, just like kind of creepy atmospheric type things. Interesting. But then, you know, you got uh, Cell Sword and uh, the writing on the wall has got great vocals from Hannah, really big anthemic chorus, right? Just hard driving song. I like this. Um, really interesting. It's just really different. I think what I'm, what I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around is the fact that after, you know, living with and loving so, I mean, you know, like I said, 1920 albums. I've been into these guys almost since day one. And you just, you know, Glass Hammer had a formula and it always worked. And you always knew you can count on a new Glass Hammer for formula, new Glass Hammer album to have that symphonic old school style prog sound, right? And now it's like they've, they've thrown you for a loop these last two albums and doing something completely different. And it really works. And I give them credit. So it's like, so I'm still in the process of like saying, okay, this is where Glass Hammer is at now. And I like it. And you know what, guys? Good job. This is a really good, dark, heavy prog album. It's it's almost like veering off into like heavy rock. And yeah, there's still plenty of prog here, you know, conceptually, of course. And there's still lots of, you know, complex passages and things like that. But man, this is it's a pretty heavy album in spots. This is probably one of the heavier prog albums you're going to hear this year. And damn, if a good chunk of it isn't really catchy and memorable. Win-win, right? Absolutely win-win. Uh, Hannah, welcome to the team. Welcome to the band. Uh, good sounding album. Like the dark tones. Like the gritty guitar riffs. Love the blazing guitar solos. Just, you know, a little bit of everything in here, but definitely heavier. And again, you know, whether this is something that Glass Hammer is going to do forever going forward, we'll see. Maybe this approach just really matches the lyrics, you know, the, the story behind this, 
And again, that's something that maybe I'll be asking Steve when hopefully I have him and Fred on the show in the not too distant future to talk about this album and specifically this trio of albums. Is, is you know is this more so to match up with the concept of these albums, or is this is this the direction that Glass Hammer is going to kind of continue down? Because if that's the case, pretty cool, right? I think you know maybe for all of us longtime Glass Hammer listeners. You know, this is a step in a direction that's, you know, that's kind of welcome. I love the old stuff, too. But this is proving to be a nice detour, and I really kind of dig it a lot. So, uh, so yeah, there you have it. Scalagrim, Into the Breach, brand new from Tennessee's Glass Hammer. Check it out. Uh, I'll put a link to their uh, page where you can check this out and order and all that kind of good stuff. So thanks for watching, everybody. Visit us on the web at www.catranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Of course, we're here on YouTube all the damn time. Thanks for watching. Going to get a review coming up tonight. Uh, Louis Nasser is going to join me. We are going to review the brand new Between the Buried and Me, Colors, Part 2. That's coming up tonight, so stay tuned for that. And uh, lots more here on the channel this week. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And click on that notification bell so you get alert of all of our content if you want to make a channel donation we got the link to our ko-fi page below the link to our merch page below we got all sorts of cool sea of tranquility stuff and of course sea of tranquility.org our webzine that has now been online for 20 years this year thanks for watching i am p pardo see you all real soon bye-bye